Websites are fluid, interactive, and accessible by everyone at any time. Can someone trust coming to a website you've built that their privacy will be respected? Can they be confident that they won't download a virus, that their visit is secure, or that their data is only viewable to those that have specific rights to view it? In this lesson, we talk about the ways to aid user privacy and user trust for visitors on your website and the websites you build. User privacy used to only be an ethical issue rather than a legal one. As of late, however, many countries are writing laws to protect users' privacy. GDPR, or the General Data Protection Regulation, is legislation specific to users in the European Union to give them power over their data privacy. In the United States, many states are passing privacy laws, so users have the right to access and delete personal information and to opt out of the sale of personal information, among other things. Yet even with laws, practices that may not be illegal can still be considered unethical. As we move through this lesson and others, take the Ethical Business Standards resource and begin to formulate what practices you will implement in your business based on points brought up in each lesson. There are four main areas you can focus on to create standards to aid user privacy and trust. One aspect of user privacy and trust that is very common is spam emails. It's easy to complain about an endless amount of spam emails, yet have you ever thought about what ways you contribute to this? When you send emails on behalf of your business, you want to check for a few things. That the list is from opted-in users, that it's clear how one can unsubscribe from the list and the link to unsubscribe is available in the email, and that the user is indeed being unsubscribed. Sending unwanted emails is a blurry line of ethics. On one hand, that is email marketing. Sending unprompted emails in hopes that what you are offering is something the user wants. On the flip side, knowingly sending unwanted emails to trap people, to nag into engagement, or to find clever ways of keeping them from being 100% unsubscribed is an ethical issue. Some businesses will have multiple lists and subscribe people to all their lists without the user requesting to be subscribed. Then if the user unsubscribes, the business is careful to only make that request from a list like marketing while still having them subscribe to news or product updates. Giving an option to unsubscribe from all lists is an ethical practice. Now, when it comes to websites, it should be disclosed what happens to them while they are on the website and what happens to their data after they leave. For compliance with the laws, these disclosures will also need to state how users can request to have their information removed. The common practice is to use a privacy policy. It's become standard now to have a privacy policy on every site, so that's not the concern. The question that comes up is leaving the content of the privacy policy in the hands of the client, who often doesn't know how their site works, what information is being tracked, and how the information is being stored. Aiding your client in making sure their privacy policy is accurate is key ethical practice. Make sure the privacy policy and other disclosures are clear, easy to understand, and easily accessible on the website. Privacy policies should state how a user's visit is tracked and how their information is used. If you need more advice on devising a clear privacy policy for clients, view the Skill Up video, Generating Privacy Policies for Clients. When it comes to most websites, information is often stored in a database. With databases comes the risk of that information being hacked. Are your forms and client interactions clear? Is everything secured under HTTPS? Who has access to the database or the merchant solution? If the user's data is stored insecurely or accessible by the wrong people, that data can be compromised even if sent across the web securely. If working with support teams to troubleshoot problems, think about only giving access to a staging site that has user information wiped or deleted. Make sure your username and passwords to your database are unique and a challenge to hack. The last aspect to consider regarding user data and trust is the use of third-party apps. In website builds, it is inevitable that you will use third-party apps by inserting code snippets and installing plugins or extensions. Are you unknowingly sharing user information from a website? Chances are the answer is yes. Therefore, many privacy policies will mention the use of third-party apps on the site, stating that the owner of the website cannot control what third parties decide to do. 
Indeed, you cannot control what third parties will do with the information they grab from users on the websites you build, but you can audit and control the website's third party usage. Before pulling in code from various places that can access user data, consider if there is a way you could find a solution locally. Do you insert font libraries that track user data? There are alternatives that don't require third-party JavaScript, allowing you to download and host the fonts locally. Other interactive third-party apps that are common but also track and store user data include Google Maps, Google Analytics, YouTube, and Vimeo. These functions may be required, but it is worth noting when discussing user data and user trust. Installing social widgets invites third parties to see and track user data, the same with many form captchas. Yes, even they can track and store user data. With all these areas, it is up to you what practices you want to implement in your business. For websites that are interactive with forms and tracking for the sake of marketing, user data is very important. However, what you can do as a web developer to help curb data breaches or mismanagement of the user's data can be impactful. Even though your country, province, or state may not have laws covering user privacy, it's still wise to follow ethical practices. One day soon, anti-spamming laws and online privacy laws will be the norm. And if you are already building websites with this in mind, both your clients and yourself will be better prepared for changes to come.